Well, good afternoon, everyone. Let me uh, first of all just thank you for being here. As usual, I have Dr. Toomey and Director Stallings with me again today. They'll both be providing updates and will certainly be available, as I will, for a few questions when we get finished. Just wanted to give you a brief, a brief update on our vaccination numbers. We've now given at least one dose to over 860,000 Georgians over the age of 65 which is a group that accounts for 77% of Georgia's deaths due to COVID-19. To put that number in perspective, we have now provided at least one vaccine dose to nearly 60% of Georgia's elderly population. This is one of the highest percentages of any state in the country, with the national average being at 49%. The data shows that these are the most vulnerable Georgians to COVID-19, and thanks to the efforts of our private providers and our public health workers, we have made significant progress in protecting them from this deadly virus. As the state was facing limited supplies of the vaccine from the federal government, it was vital that we prioritize those who are most at risk of hospitalization and death. These are no doubt tough decisions, but I believe that our approach has been the right one and ultimately has saved lives. But thankfully, we're seeing an increased supply. Next week's first dose allocation will be over 223,000 doses. That is up from 198,000 this week. As of today, over the last 28 days, we have administered 1.1 million vaccine doses. And according to the Department of Public Health's website, we have administered nearly eight of every 10 doses that the state has received. On the Johnson & Johnson front, we expect to have those 83,000 doses this week. We will be prioritizing those doses for our educators to expedite a full five days a week return to the classroom. Dr. Toomey and DPH have been partnering with our school systems on this plan, and she'll share more with you in her update here in just a minute. As I've said many times before, every student belongs in the classroom five days a week, full time, as soon as possible. That is my expectation moving forward, and we look forward to partnering with local districts to ensure that this happens very quickly. Both our office and the Department of Public Health have received numerous questions about how different media outlets and federal websites in Georgia standing in those rankings. With the data that I just laid out, I believe that we have done more than most any state to protect those who are most vulnerable to COVID-19 with the limited supply that has been given to us by the federal government. I'll also add that the Department of Public Health utilized roughly half of our first dose allocation last week as second doses to ensure Georgians who had gotten their first shot received their booster shot on time. This increased need for second doses for many providers across the state was the result of intense demand here in Georgia when we first expanded eligibility back in mid-January. This created a large number of seniors and frontline health care workers who needed their second dose in a very short period of time. This reallocation by the state to meet that need is the primary reason why over the last few days Georgia's numbers of first dose, doses administered have slowed in comparison to other states. We expect those numbers will improve very shortly, especially with the expanded eligibility occurring next Monday, March the 8th. But we can and should do more to make absolutely certain more doses are getting into the arms of Georgians as quickly as possible. We continue to work with private providers to ensure they are not holding any doses in reserve, given the significant improvements in the supply chain from the federal government and manufacturers. As well as making sure providers upload their vaccine data as quickly as possible, so the state has accurate information about how many doses have been administered and where. Given that the state mass vaccination sites currently have 75,000 currently eligible Georgians on a waiting list, there is still plenty of demand out there. 
I'd like to remind Georgians that we have a wide variety of private providers outside of the state vaccination sites who are scheduling appointments for those who are currently eligible. Walgreens, CVS, Walmart, Kroger, Publix, Ingalls, and many others are offering appointments at many of their locations. I would urge you to contact them as well. Dr. Toomey will cover some of the details of the new expanded eligibility that will become effective on March the 8th, in addition to the very promising COVID-19 data coming out of our long-term care facilities. I did want to briefly remind everyone that the March 8th expansion will open up vaccine to roughly one million more Georgians. So we definitely expect heavy demand in the first couple of weeks, as you can imagine. That's why we're announcing today that we're standing up five additional state-operated mass vaccination sites in Chatham, Ware, Washington, Bartow, and Muskogee counties, which will increase our weekly capacity at state sites to 45,000 doses for all nine locations. Again, those sites will be in Savannah, Waycross, Sandersville, Cartersville, and Columbus. All sites will become operational on March the 17th in advance of an additional expansion of vaccine eligibility criteria in the second half of this month. As Dr. Toomey and I covered last week, specific details of that expansion will be announced in the coming days in order for Georgians and providers to plan ahead. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Director Stallings for more updates on the new sites. Director Stallings. Thank you, Governor. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I want to start off by thanking our private and our public sector partners, uh, as well as the staff of the site for their tireless efforts. Our number one goal at the beginning of this was shots in arms, and we could not do it without the helps of our partners. Again, FEMA, Department of Public Health, and Dr. Toomey and her team have been instrumental in our, in our success, our DOD partners, as well as the, the private sector that we we're working with. Since the sites opened last Monday, we've administered 24,924 first doses, which we're, we're very proud of. The total number of appointments this week is 17,496, and to date, we've received 243,000 pre-registrations, which we are very excited about. Uh, that lets us know that the sites are working and folks are finding their way to the website. In addition to the four sites that we already have operational, as the governor mentioned, we're adding four sites. To be more specific, we'll be at Lake Point Sports Complex in Bartow County, Gulfstream Aerospace in Chatham County, Columbus Civic Center in Muskogee, the Waycross Mall in Ware County, and the Word of Life Church in Washington County. The site at the Gulfstream Aerospace Facility is a result of a partnership with Gulfstream Aerospace Corporation, and we're extremely grateful for their hospitality there. As the governor mentioned, these sites will begin on March 17th. With the opening of the additional mass sites, we will have the potential to administer a minimum of 20,000 more dosages a week. As Dr. Toomey will explain in just a moment, the extended uh, eligible criteria will begin on March the 8th, but pre-registration can still happen at myvaccinegeorgia.com. Once you've pre-registered, you'll be notified when you're eligible to schedule your appointments, so no need to keep going back. We'll, we'll get to you. If you're not currently eligible to receive the vaccine, you can still sign up, and we highly encourage Georgia residents to schedule their vaccine when it's their turn. The more Georgians that are vaccinated, the safer the state will be for all of us. The mission of our agency is to protect the lives of Georgians, and we're thankful to Governor Kemp and his team for giving us the opportunity. Dr. Toomey? Thank you, everyone. I just had a couple of quick things I wanted to update you on. Uh, in addition to the numbers that you heard, which are very encouraging, that have plateaued at a lower level than they had been, and we'll, we hope will continue that way. As I mentioned last week, long-term care facilities 
have really shown a dramatic improvement, which I think reflects the hard work that we did to ensure that residents of long-term care facilities were vaccinated. And like we saw in the national trends, uh, that the data from DCH, which includes nursing home personnel care, personal care homes and assisted living facilities, there's been an 87 percent decline in cases and a 71 percent decline in deaths. And we aren't seeing the kind of outbreaks there that we had seen in the past. And data from HHS and CDC, which just covers nursing homes, similarly shows an 82 percent decline in cases and deaths and are beginning to trend down about 10 percent at this time. And you can see behind me our graphics that demonstrate both of these, uh, both these trends, both in the long-term care facilities and the combined DCH graphics. And this is both nationally and, and a trend here. And I think this is reflective of not only the work that we did there, but also is a predictor of what's going to happen statewide because of our vaccine efforts. Uh, as Governor said, we will be opening up on, on March 8th to additional categories of individuals. Uh, and we want to be sure that people understand that they can register, as you heard, as well as on our website, which has uh, a, a scheduling tool on the vaccination page. And that will be fully statewide by next week and will be up and running and ready to schedule by uh, Sunday evening statewide. The expanded eligible populations include half a million educational workers workforce, so that would include teachers as well as bus drivers and others in the school who may be there uh, with the students and assisting with the, uh, with the school openings. Adults and children with intellectual and developmental and, and children with intellectual and developmental disabilities and caregivers. And it's the adults um, who are with intellectual and developmental disabilities that we will be vaccinating at this point in time. These, uh, a, a developmental disability is characterized by limitations in intellectual functioning or adaptive behavior. And so we, this would be everything from an individual with cerebral palsy or an individual, an adult individual with Down syndrome. But in addition, we will be vaccinating those, uh, those parents of children with severe me complex medical conditions. And we felt this was important because they are in many cases serving as a caregiver to these children who themselves are at high risk for COVID. And because the vaccine cannot be given to, given to children yet, we wanted to ensure that they were protected. So this, these medically complex children will include everyone from children with complex congenital heart anomalies to asthma to sickle cell disease to obesity. These are the children who are likely to suffer complications or even death if they become infected with COVID, as well as uh, many other familiar other um, conditions in children such as malignancies on chemotherapy, uh, severe to moderate asthma, or cystic fibrosis. And we will have this all outlined on our website. And as we move into the subsequent categories of, of uh, not just parents of these children, but also adults and future, uh, and future rollouts, we will make sure to itemize these so there won't be any confusion of who might be eligible. So that's kind of a, a quick summary of where we are. And I'm happy to answer specific questions. And all this will be outlined. Uh, well ahead of time so there should not be confusion, as well as on the scheduling tool, we'll have these various categories um, outlined so that there will be uh, clarity about who your eligibility or the eligibility of a parent of a child. Thank you. All right. Got any quick questions? Uh, Governor, um, there's been a lot of action on voting here in, under the Gold Dome the last couple of days, and I know you've talked to some folks about it. Uh, do you think that restricting Sunday voting and getting rid of no excuse absentee voting is a good thing for Georgians? Well, there's been a lot of action on the vaccine front today, too. I didn't realize we were doing a press conference on voting issues. As I've said, 
throughout my tenure as governor and secretary of state, I think it should be easy to vote and hard to cheat, and we should have secure, accessible, fair elections in Georgia. I think there's over 100 bills, or certainly over 50. Our office is staying in touch with the General Assembly on both parties in regards to this, and we'll continue to do that as the process plays out. Governor Kemp, on the vaccines, over 2 million vaccines have been administered so far, I believe. It's the latest number I've seen. And if my census figures for Georgia are correct, there are some 5.6 million adults, people 21 and older in Georgia. So at least 40 percent of Georgia adults have now had at least one dose of this vaccine. What is your projection? What is your goal for making the vaccine universally available in Georgia? When do you think that's going to happen based on everything you know so far? And when do you think all this is going to end? Well, that's a, <laughs> that's a loaded question, John. I will say that a lot of it depends on the information that we're going to continue to get from the Biden administration and how quickly um, the suppliers of the vaccine. I mean, that's been our issue the whole time, uh, and it has been for every state just needing more supply. I mean, Director Stallings can speak to our ability at our mass vaccination sites, but if you look at the state sites that we're doing mass vaccination campaigns at currently, we're given 94 percent of the doses that we got. Uh, we know that we can double the amount of shots we're given very easily at those sites. We could probably do much more than that. We also can spread out and have additional sites, which we're doing with these five today, so that when that day comes, when we don't increase from 198,000 doses to 223, but when we go from 223 to 500,000 or whatever the number is going to be, we're going to already be prepared from the state perspective to ramp up. You know, one of the frustrations I've had, quite honestly, is we can't control doses that are going straight to pharmacy chains and things that the federal government is doing that sometimes aren't getting out as fast as the state's perspective. That is why we are taking the initiative today to set up additional sites so that we are ready. The day one kinks are worked out before we get the large expansion and we keep continuing to get shots in arms with what we have. Now, based on what I'm seeing and reading and talking to other governors, I feel very optimistic that as we move into late spring, early summer, we're going to be a much different place than we are right now. And I think you can go back to what Dr. Toomey said and what we have on these charts right here behind us, where the targeted approach for our seniors over 65, which we did even before CDC recommended, the approach that we've had in our long-term care facilities, we are now seeing those deaths decline, hospitalizations decline, and we are seeing outbreaks decline. So we know that what we are doing is working, it's protecting the most vulnerable. And I would remind everybody, back to seven, eight, nine months ago, the steps that we've taken early on to stop the spread and flatten the curve were to build up hospital bed capacity, to allow us to have the supplies and the PPE and develop the treatments. And that is what we have done with vaccinating our seniors in our state, is to try to give relief to our hospitals. And we've seen over the last several weeks, our hospital numbers have plummeted. Um, because of a lot of these actions and because of, quite honestly, their good work and treatments. And just to follow up, in the news today, we've heard about Governor Abbott in Texas dropping all restrictions. I know he's doing what he believes is right for Texas. What do you think is going to be right for Georgia based on everything you've just said? When is that going to happen in Georgia? Well, that's something that I'm certainly looking at. I mean, I think a lot of things that he's uh, gotten rid of, like the mask mandate, obviously we didn't have that here. If you look around now, people aren't arguing about the mask mandate anymore because Dr. Toomey and I believe that people wanted to do the right thing. We just had to ask them to do that. Uh, the science is behind that. It's uh, been very convincing, I think, of the number of people that you're seeing wearing a mask, continuing to follow the social distancing guidelines. It's a good time to remind people just because we're doing a lot at our vaccine sites, we can't let our guard down. We've got to keep doing this for another month or two and get closer to true herd immunity. But I have a, I just feel like we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel uh, because of the amount of people that have now gotten the vaccine, the amount of the supply continues to increase week over week. And I do believe we're going to get to that point where 
instead of going up by additional 50,000 doses a week, it's going to go up by 150 or 200,000, and we're going to be able to have even more providers given the vaccines. We're going to be able to expand further mass vaccination sites or send you know, more vaccines to parts of the state where, quite honestly, we haven't had to do max vac vaccination sites because, like Augusta University is doing such, such a good job, the hospitals and the public health department in Athens are doing such a good job, and that's been the case in other areas around the state as well. But we cannot let our guard down. We've got to keep working on all fronts to, to get back to normal, and that is to get shots in arms, but also just hang in there, just hang in there for a little while longer and follow the guidelines, and let's keep, keep our numbers where they are and fight through this here for another month or so. Governor, um, no matter how much the state expands vaccine access, there's still hesitancy, right? And the Kaiser Family Foundation says that Republicans are actually the group with the largest amount of vaccine hesitancy, more than people of color. What, do, what is the state going to do to try to convince all different kinds of communities to take the vaccine? Well, hopefully I can help with the Republicans that are hesitant there. I plan on getting my vaccine as soon as I'm eligible, Dr. Toomey. Dr. Toomey might want to give me that shot. But, um, you know, I mean, that is a real thing. We've been working on that very hard, uh, certainly in our minority communities. You know, I've talked with all the HBCU presidents the other day. Um, I had Dr. French in the office from Clark Atlanta today. We continue to talk about those things. I visited Savannah State. We've been dealing with the Latino Hispanic community up in Gainesville. John King, our insurance commissioner, con was in Dalton the other day, continues to work on that. A lot of other people we're partnering uh, with. Santiago Marquez uh, has been working with uh, his partnership in, in the Latino community. And so we've got to do the same thing for everybody. I think the further this goes, the more people uh, that, are, that have access to the vaccine, the more that the people around their colleagues and their friends and folks that they're worshiping with that have gotten the vaccine, that are having no ill effects, I think everybody will come around. Uh, and that's certainly going to be what I'm going to be doing, uh, leading by example, as soon as I'm eligible. Governor, the state's numbers show eight out of ten of those vaccines have been put in arms, but those CDC numbers continue to lag, show us at the bottom of the country in distribution. Why that consistent discrepancy, and where are we compared to other states? Well, I think we're doing very well for who we're targeting. And look, it's been the same way since day one. The media will always focus on the worst number, not the number that matters the most. And I think that's what's happening in this case. I'm looking at all those websites, too. You don't see on that website where Georgia's at 60 percent of vaccinating people over 65 years of age, and the national average is 49 percent, and that the death percentage of people over 65 in Georgia is 77 percent. So on the advice of Dr. Toomey, and, and I agree with her, we have got to target the population that gets hit the hardest. And you're not seeing that on, on any site. Again, to reiterate what I said earlier, we can't control what the federal government is sending to other people that the state is not administering itself. I mean, we, we lose some in transit because when the doses ship, we get credited for them right away, even though we may not have even taken possession, and then we have to get them out to the, once we take possession, we have to get them out to the, to the uh, public health departments or the mass vaccination sites or to the private sector partners, wherever we're sending them. So there's always going to be a little bit of a lag, but the federal pharmacy program, we can't control who sold, uh, who's holding second doses. I don't think they should be doing that. They should be giving those doses. The supply chain is caught up. They don't need to do that anymore. They need to get shots in arms. We've urged them to do that. We've urged them to report data quicker that I think will increase our numbers. But if you look at what the state's controlling at our sites, we got 94% of shots going into arms, and that's with some some weak demand that we've seen uh, early on in the Albany area, and we're shifting those doses around to make sure that they're getting to other providers so that we get those shots in arms. So I think Director Stallings has done a, a great job, and that's why we're opening more sites, because we know we can be in a lot better range with what we control as the state than, than doses that are going to other places.